Hello everyone. Today we're going to handle the solution of linear ODEs and we start with the most simplest case, a linear ODE which is scalar, so we have some x dot of t is equal a of xt, giving some initial condition x of t at time 0 is x0 which is some real number and this a here is also some parameter also coming from the real number which we will analyze later on. So what we have here is the most simple uh, form of an ODE. We have a scalar ODE which is linear and we want to solve it. And for this we need an approach equation or an ansatz equation and in order to do that I postulate that a potential solution of this ODE or initial value problem could be x of t is equal to e to the power of a times t times some integration constant c which we'll, we are going to uh, investigate later. We can now prove that this Ansatz equation actually can solve our ODE which we have here but just inserting the Ansatz equation into the ODE. So we calculate d dt, so basically the left hand side. And what we get from this obviously is x dot of t is equal a times e to the power a t times c. And if we have a closer look, of course that here is our Ansatz equation again, x of t, so this is this one here. So what we actually have is x dot is equal a times xt, which is our ODE model. So we have therefore shown that this Ansatz equation here is actually a solution of our linear scalar ODE. Perfect. What is missing now is an information regarding this constant c and this constant c can be calculated, can be found by now considering also our initial value, so the initial state x0 from where we try to solve the ODE. So therefore, very simple, we evaluate x at t0, which is our initial value x0. And this is, if I just plug in t for t being 0, so e to the power of a times 0 times c, that here is obviously 1, and what remains is c. So we can see that x0 is actually c. So we have found the solution for c, and therefore we can combine everything together and find out that our solution of our linear Scalar ODE is xt is identical to x0, so our starting condition or starting state, times e to the power of at. So, what does that mean is actually that if we have this model describing the dynamics of some system and we know the starting state of x0, which is basically the only information which we need besides the model structure, then we know that this is a so-called time response or system response in the time domain. And we can qualitatively evaluate this time response with respect to the parameter a, which can basically have three distinct cases. So I'm doing a little sketch here. This is t and that is x of t, our state, and we just consider some arbitrary x0 like this. And now let's discuss several cases regarding a. One case could be that a is a negative real number. So in this case this would become a negative exponent and of course that would basically decay to zero. So this would be the classical case for a being a negative number. So we therefore have a decaying process which tends to zero. 
if a is a positive number, this entire exponent becomes a positive number with this exponential function. So this basically blows up and goes towards infinity. So we would have qualitatively something like this for a being a positive number greater than zero. So in this case, we could also call the system unstable as we will see later in one of the follow-up videos because giving some initial state, the state response is unlimited. It completely goes through the roof. And then we have the third and somehow trivial case where we consider a being exactly zero. Why do I call this a trivial case? Because if a is zero, of course, this exponent becomes e to the power of zero, which is again one. So basically the system response is x zero all the time. So the state does not change, it stays constant. And this is also trivial because if you would plug in a zero here in our ODE, this would basically mean that the right-hand side of our e, ODE is just zero all the time. And basically that would mean that we do not have a dynamic system anymore because just a static system which does not change its state over time. So with this little qualitative evaluation here, we have found the solution of a linear ODE in the time domain in the scalar case. And in our next video, we're going to extend that towards a state with more than one state and therefore to a vectorial state evaluation. Thank you.